Hi. Well, we have some old cats, and uh, one of them's 21 years old. And needless to say, he doesn't get around as easy as he used to. So I decided to make a climbing platform that will allow him to get up to a perch that he likes to, likes to hang out in. And I'm going to use this uh, 4x4 construction lumber. This is uh, Douglas, Douglas fir. I have straightened it and squared it up. And there's going to be th uh, three platforms with uh, positions such that he'll be able to climb up uh, to his spot. I'm going to use two pieces such as similar to this that will act as supports that will keep it from falling over and this is going to be positioned up into a corner but uh, I don't want this there to be you know as the cats jump on this I don't want this to be uh, rocking this way and hitting the wall and uh, you know damaging the wall over time so what I'm going to do is cut a compound five degree angle on the base which will let it lean over slightly this way. And I'll use the same angle for the shelves, so the shelves will remain uh, parallel with the floor. Now, um, since this is a big chunk of wood, it's really impractical for me to try and do this on the table saw. Um, I certainly couldn't do it in one pass. And I have a eight inch uh, sliding com sliding compound miter saw, but you know it also can't cut this. So I'm going to do most of the joinery with hand tools. Uh, I think at this point, and um, we'll go from there. So let's get started.
They're pretty happy with that. Now I'm not, I still need to finish it up and I'm going to use a smoothing plane to, uh, to take it down to the final, to, to my final um, gauge lines. I'm going to use this low angle smoothing plane. Uh, it's a Veritas. It's their small smoothing plane. The blade is sharp, but since I'm going to be cutting end grain, I'm just going to hone the edge a little bit just to make it as sharp as possible. going to do this until my gauge lines start to disappear. Well, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Probably not quite up to Japanese timber frame standards, but um, good for a cat stand. Okay, now that the base is finished, I'll repeat the same process for the top. Then I can move on to the joinery for the the legs.
Okay, now fit the uh, clean up this shoulder and, and then I'll have to rip a five degree bevel on both these edges and then when I glue glue this these onto the the post I'll I'll trim the edges flush and plane this flush with the surface and should be good. I ended up um, cutting the bevel, five degree bevel on the edges with the jointer since I needed to uh, joint these edges anyway. So that was easy and I just finished cross cutting pieces to five degrees. So that's roughly how it's going to go together. And uh, they're proud on purpose so that when I glue them up I'll be able to plane them flush with the post. So I'm using three quarter inch plywood for the shelves. Now that I have have this uh, one side of the dado um, established with my saw and chisel, I'm going to set this up against that edge, and I'll mark the other side.
Okay, so I have the dado started on both sides and I'm just going to be using a chisel and it's going to be one inch deep on both sides. All right, well, I finished uh, two mortises, one on each side. And of course, they join since I've done this in the corner. Just using the chisel and uh, at the at the end I used a uh, router plane to uh, finish the bottoms. And it uh, fits nice, nice and tight. I thought originally I was going to need some fasteners, but I think uh, how this is fitting, just glue is going to be all I'm going to need. It's not gappy at all. I'm really, um, really happy. All right, just need to do this two more times for a total of three shelves. The three mortises are complete. It took on average about one hour to complete each one. Uh, they were a little more complicated than, than your usual mortise in that they're corner mortises and that they were on compound angles. Um, but they came out great. I then took my uh, test shelf material and cut the associated tenon just on a, the, a test corner just so I'd, I could work out the, the appropriate angles, mating angles and uh, of course I did actually make a mistake on one of them so this served its purpose so now I have everything worked out and the, I shouldn't be making any mistakes in the actual shelving Next, I'm going to um, I'm going to finish the legs and then attach them. I need, just need to uh, cut a profile on the end of each leg. I made a template with some French curves to get this profile that I like. And I'll just trace this on the end. I'm going to cut this in. Again. use a drum sander to finish this off but since this is cut at a five degree angle and my table doesn't tilt I'm going to use spoke shaves to finish it followed up with See, uh, get a nice, pretty good finish with uh, spoke shaves and a bit of sanding. And uh, I am going to be painting these, so I just uh, sanded one grit. This is 150, 150 grit.
I'm really happy with how this glue up came out. A lot of uh, long grain to long grain glue surface. But there's only one shoulder that this leg is leveraging against. So I'm just going to add a little additional insurance with a couple quarter inch dowels in each leg. And I think that'll that'll effectively act as another uh, shoulder down here. And I'm also going to glue these in a slight angle, which will add a lot of uh, pull out resistance. Not that I'm too worried about that with all this glue surface. Can't hurt though. And when I glue this, I'm going to use a drill bit that's one sixty fourth of an inch uh, smaller than a quarter inch. That's because, as you know, these dowels from the big box store are typically not a quarter inch, they're usually a bit smaller. And then I'm hand drilling, which also adds a little bit of slop. So when I find if I use an undersized drill, you'll get a pretty good, good fit with your dowels. Well, it's been about 12 hours since I glued these in and um, I'm going to cut these off just with a regular uh, fine tooth saw. I'm not worried about scratching uh, the legs because the legs are proud of the post by design and I'll, I'll be planing them, planing them flush later. wanted to show you a close-up of the results of this connection with the leg and the post. Uh, so here are the two dowels and you can see some, some uh, breakout wood fibers when I drilled the, the holes here. Uh, I think it's particularly susceptible to that when you're drilling at an angle. And then here's a uh, less than perfect connection uh, with this butt joint between the two legs. Now this is all fine with me because um, from the get-go this was this, this was going to be painted. So I'll, I'll just be filling this in uh, with a little filler and sand it and it'll work out great. If this was uh, not going to be painted, I would have, instead of this being butt joint, I would have made a, a miter joint between the two legs. Of course that would have been more complicated because it's a... Uh, compound miter joint, but that's what I would have done 
and uh, here I probably would have used a, a jig that would have um, prevented any uh, breakout on the surrounding fibers. around a pencil and it's a makeshift compass. This is what I'm going to cut out in the bandsaw. This joint is very close to the end and I'm slightly concerned about the stress on this end grain. Even though this is Douglas spur and it's really tough stuff, uh, I think I want to add a little bit of insurance. So I'm going to use uh, pocket holes. I'm going to put one pocket hole here and here. Of course I'll, I'll be drilling them on the, the bottom side. And I'll do that on all three shelves. And of course with the pocket holes, I won't have to use clamps when I glue this up. I'm painting this with some flat paint and I'm using a sampler that you can get from the big box store. They're, they're about three bucks and you can get any color you want that the manufacturer uh, makes. In this case, Bear. Uh, Lidden sells these too. Um, so they'll mix them up for you and something like this. I could probably uh, paint three or four of these uh, cat stands with, with one of these. So. Uh, it's a great alternative, and uh, this is flat. But if I'm, and I'm not sure if I'm going to 
stay with flat uh, for this stand, but if I wanted satin, semi-gloss, or gloss, I could just apply a, a clear coat of whatever sheen I want on top of it. I ended up putting three coats on the stand and you can see how much paint is left over. So these uh, three dollar samplers are really great for small projects.
complete. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. Now I did have to make one unanticipated change and that was the size and shape of these shelves. My original design had three this size. You might recall at the bandsaw I was cutting this sh shape out. An idea was that uh, the middle shelf would be like, like, like so and the cat could climb up to this axis here. And then the top shelf would be like this and again they could climb up here. Uh, so I installed these temporarily without the carpet and um, tried it and he just couldn't navigate this. It was just too steep. So I had to abandon that approach. And this is what I came up with. Essentially a, a mini stair, which works great, but, the, but um, it did have an effect on my design in that this bottom piece is much longer than the feet, were, which were designed for this size. So it became unstable. To fix that, I created this post, simple post, rubber feet on the bottom, painted it, and you, you can see without this, it really wants to, to tip. But with this, it becomes really solid. And I'm, I'm really happy with it. Now, another uh, consequence of my design of going with an inclined post is that it added a lot of work to this project. And the fact that I had a large post and I couldn't use my power tools. I had to do all, everything with hand tools. And all the joinery involved compound angles. So uh, on the upside, I got a lot of practice creating uh, uh, handcrafted joinery with uh, compound angles. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this project and uh, thanks for stopping by.